I have to say, the, you could have heard a pin drop in the room when Nikki Christou won the Child of Courage Award. You're here and you spoke so beautifully last Thank night. You. We're expecting high things this morning, even though what time did you go to bed, madam? 2 a.m. 2 a.m. <laughs> that is brilliant. Two hours earlier than Carol, though. Yeah. But um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> um, this was incredible for you last night, was it? Just yeah. tell me how it felt. It felt incredible. Um, I only actually found out that I was going to be receiving um, an award about two days before. Really? Yeah, so it, it had all been quite hush-hush. And so I think it was, although it was overwhelming, it was also just such an amazing experience because I never thought I'd be someone receiving yeah. such an amazing award. You are 12 years old. Yeah. At six, you were diagnosed with a condition. You, yeah. you describe it for us. Yeah, so I was diagnosed with something called an AVM. Um, and basically, um, on the right side of my face, um, you have arteries, capillaries and veins. Um, and on the right side of my face, I don't have the capillaries in the middle where they need to be. So it causes me to have um, life-threatening mm. threatening nosebleeds and really intense headaches. And, and the veins started to pop out, did they? And then yeah. it just sort of progressively yeah. got worse as time went on. Um, but you presumably felt quite low at certain points it mm. must have been a very difficult yeah. thing for you and you've got an older sister for you all to deal with yeah what was the lowest point and how did that then turn into what you've become today which is a, an amazing yeah. young woman i think the lowest point was probably when um not necessarily when i veins started appearing on my face but when the reality the medical reality yeah. of what um, my condition I was going to be faced with with my condition came to life and mm. um, there was one Christmas Eve when I had my first uh, life-threatening nosebleed and that was I think turning point when we thought this is going to be my life and this isn't going to be um, normal yeah. anymore. We are in a looks obsessed, yeah. social media obsessed, YouTube obsessed, image obsessed society. Yeah. What do you say to people about that? I think I just, the message that I want to get across, I, not that I know that I do get it across in every video to everyone, mm. um, but it's just, you know, that like, although most people are judged now on what you look like on the outside. I think it's really important to not judge a book by its cover because if you saw me on the street, you, would, you wouldn't you would think I was the prettiest girl you've ever seen. And I think it's important to be able to get to know someone before you make any, you know, theories. And I think that's why I try to teach people, wow. you know, beauty lies within. And and my answer to that is I, th I think if other contestants had a problem with a transgender person, that's their ignorance. And should they really be in a pageant 